day hey hey how's it going welcome back to my channel and this time we're still on ncl star and this episode we're talking about food on ncl you want to know more about it let's find out Norwegian Cruise Line pioneered the concept of freestyle dining with multiple large restaurants and intimate specialty dining venues. Passengers who prefer standard dining, same time every evening, same table, and same table mate can notify their staff upon boarding and arrange to adjust that. Located on deck 6, La Cocina Italian Italy is serving all the usual pasta and pizza favorite. When you think of Italian food, what do you think about? Well, the first two things you probably think about are pasta and pizza. Well, besides those two items, there are more of dishes to enjoy. For example, this evening I had the calamari to start. And also for the main, I had lamb chang. It's also Italian food, not just pasta and pizza. At dinner, I normally order appetizer, main course, and dessert. But this time around, I want to try the proper Italian way, whereas well, according to all the menu, if you notice when you go to Italian restaurant, you see all these first course, second course, third and fifth in the race. So this evening, I went out and tried everything. So I have um, the appetizer, which was fried calamari. Then I have gnocchi. Then I have my lamb shank and then dessert. By the time the meal was over, I was so bloated, but made no mistake. The cuisine was very good. In fact, La Cucina Italian restaurant on in Star was a good Italian restaurant I had for quite a while. On NCL Star Cruise Ship, there is no heaven area for the penthouse and family suite guests. The menu and characters for lunch is pretty much stay the same throughout the whole cruise, but it's quite a big variety. I enjoy my flatbread mushroom and soup of the day, it depends on the day, but most of the time the soup is good. It does sometimes a bit much, but I enjoy it so much so. I suffered a bit eating so much of good food, but hey, you're on a cruise, so why not? The lunch starts from noon and ends at 1.30 p.m., which means it's quite a short period of time because, for example, when you go on a short, uh, short excursion and you come back, sometimes you come back like 1.30 or 1.45 and the restaurant is closed. Sometimes they let you in. One time I came back at 1.37 and they let me in. Thank you very much. But my thing is, if they just let the restaurant stay open until 2, this might be better for the guests that they can spend time outside, short excursion and come back and enjoy lunch on the ship. Even though you can go on a, go to the buffet, but I really like this place to have lunch. I do understand that the staff have to get the table ready for the dinner because we use the same restaurant for lunch and dinner. But if you don't have the heaven area for the guests, so maybe you should be a little bit more flexible about it. Well, my favorites are flashbash mushroom, of course. Then I like the salmon and for dessert, but not free pie. Looking at on the midship on deck 8 is Versailles. This restaurant decor is lots of gold and glitz French Renaissance flowers. Sometimes it's quite difficult to find this restaurant. A lot of time we end up at Aqua, the other main dining room. But the staff were kind enough to took us to the right place where the Versailles was. Upon arrival, the staff will offer you some water to drink, but if you have a premium plus packet, go ahead and order your fancy bottle of sparkling mineral water or still, if you like. We actually had our dinner at the first night here at the Versailles main dining room, and I had steak. It was good, it was cooked to my liking. The staff was very friendly. We ordered a bottle of wine, but when it came to the dessert, we couldn't decide what we want. And also, it's the first time in quite a while that we have been on a cruise ship, so we just 
pick one each of the desserts. So we had four desserts to share between us. By the time the dinner over, we were very Located on the same deck at the Versailles is Aqua, another main dining room which offers traditional style dining. The Aqua is contemporary, calm and cool. There are several tables of two in each restaurant. You can ask to be seated together with others or if you prefer to sit together with your other half. The menu here is similar, it's almost the same with Versailles, but I think with two dishes that's different from Versailles. In fact, I actually enjoy Aqua and Versailles somehow. I think I prefer the decor, which is much more cozy. Versailles is a bit more open. We're talking about food. I had soup, it was good. I had two nakpasho, was good. The steak with the chicken, corn and bacon was very good. With the fish, this one is a little bit dry. I actually couldn't finish it. It was a bit disappointed. The pasta with the trim, this one was very good. It was out of this world. I really enjoyed it so much. So we had um, two dinner here at Aqua during our cruise. And I would say my favorite dish will be um, the trim scrappy and the clam chowder. For dessert, oh, it doesn't look pretty at all compared to the other dessert. This one look a bit mushy but that shared jubilee it was very good we enjoyed it so much the baby guests can enjoy the breakfast at the moderno restaurant or we can just go up to the 13th floor to have the buffet for breakfast the restaurant has a different menus here you get egg benedict and more i normally like to order shrimp toast for breakfast it sounded a bit strange in it having shrimp for breakfast but it was very good I really enjoyed it so okay. one main course and dessert on the other menu okay. Labiso is Norwegian signature French Mediterranean restaurant specializing in continental dining with an atmosphere that's almost as important as the food. Small, dark, intimate, the ambient is quiet and romantic, making menu choices taste all much better. When it comes to French restaurants, I always order my steak tartare, or sometimes I would go for escargot, and the duck for me, of course, but this time around, I pick a lobster. It was, the taste was good, but it wasn't enough lobster on the dish. Besides a steak tartare, I ordered a croquette to share with my partner. For me, he had his fish and I had my lobster. The lobster was very good. I wish it had more meat than sauce, but it was good. And of course, no French in a bit of champagne, which including in your premium plus packet. So next time with your cruise, go ahead and get your package. If you enjoy drinking, wine and the other stuff. For dessert, I had the floating island, which was very, very good. I really enjoyed it. Look at this on the deck seven and it's just right behind the Ginza Chinese Association restaurant. It was a bit difficult to find if you didn't know where it is. But this is the best place to break the ice if you want to meet people. So at the dinner, you can meet people. You'll be sitting together with, uh, with other people. And of course, the chef will start his show and starting his cooking, doing his fried rice and the eggs and the whole show and stuff. It was great fun. I used to say that why people think the tapanyaki is special to me, it's not special. But now I understand why, because it's kind of bring to get people together, it's break the ice so you can start having the conversation with the people next to you. And you know the cooking show and stuff is fun to look at and you have um, activity, you know, with other people. So all in all, it's, it's very good and the fried rice, the fried rice was very good. You know, how to point out the good fried rice is the taste that, I wouldn't say burn, it's like smoky. There's almost like a little caramelized crust with the rice that's
enjoy dinner. Thank you. Hola, welcome to Moderno Chuhas Korea. This Brazilian Chuhas Korea Brazilian Grill is located on deck 13. The same place that I would normally have breakfast. This place was very good. You can enjoy your picanha, sausages, and the rest of the grilled meat that you like. The buffet here was good. It reminded me of when I was in Brazil, Sao Paulo. With sushi, farofa, I don't know why you mentioned sushi, but that's what they have in Brazil. When they have the buffet, they serve sushi. And of course, feijoada. You can't miss feijoada when it comes to Brazilian food. All the grilled meat served hot on the big skewer. I would say a skewer, like a big sword kind of thing. And you got this little card on your table. If you turn it green, the starboard comes up your meat. If you turn it red, then you want to take a break or you had enough. One little complaint about this plate is the way the staff slide the meat is way too thick. I understand this might be, you know, different stuff, but in Brazil or normally the traditional this slide the meat is very thin, not thick like this. There was mandioca, bolha de patata, arroz. No, this one is different. I don't remember this in Brazil. The staff came around and said, Would you like the yellow meat? I said, What? Yellow meat? <laughs> it was grilled pineapple. It's actually a brilliant idea because after eating all this rich food and meat and grill, the pineapple kind of helped with the digestive and clean your palate. So it was great. When it comes to dessert, I think we had flan and the, the cake. I'm not quite sure what it was, but it was good. Do you know what I forgot about this dinner? I should have gone to the mojito bar and have a caipirinha. If you have cruised on this ship before, you could be forgiven for not knowing where you are when you walk up to the stair from the grand lobby. The whole spread with Blue Lagoon restaurant and Moderna Juhas Korea, who has been now given over to the huge Ojihan. The area compromised a small central bar and then all around it, try the seating overlook the atrium. It is space rather than a room, with plenty of windows overlook the ocean and lots of chunky wooden tables and chairs. Yet despite the size and openness, there is a sense of intimacy and character and it will almost certainly become the pre and post dinner meeting place. The only thing missing from this orange hand is a bowling alley. It's a typical assortment to same classic fare that's so popular across the fleet. Mac and cheese, burger, fried, nachos, and it's open 24 hours. On deck 7 is a Ginza restaurant which is right in front of Tapanyaki. The restaurant is a kind of dark, kind of empty, it's obviously empty, it's like a space between the sushi bar and tapanyaki. So that area is a Ginza restaurant. The food was okay, it's just regular, you know, Chinese takeaway that you would go for, in, uh, you know, some ordinary, you just feel like, let's have some Chinese. But somehow we end up, had dinner the three times. The first time was just, you know, we wanted to eat there and then the first time we met some people and we invite them there because you don't have to have a reservation food was very good but i was disappointed with the desserts here so our last dinner on this crew was at the cagney steakhouse the food was good i enjoyed my main course of lobster and steak but for appetizer, when it was my first time had the oyster Rockefeller. I don't normally eat oyster, but this one I know is cooked. What happened was, when I took the meat out, to see a lot of breadcrumb under the oyster. Is that normal? I'm a partner, and he says, no, it's just way too much breadcrumb. Even though there's a lot of breadcrumb, but the bread breadcrumb got some flavor to it, but it's just way too much. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of this review. 
The cruise was very good. I enjoyed it so much. Even though I was a bit hesitant because the ship was old. She's 20 something years old. But to my surprise, it made no difference. The ship's also new. And some of the stuff's good. Service is good. The food is good. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time. Bye. Take care.